Now, each time one of those emanations comes out, here's another example. You can see my reds there emanating out, causing the blues to come in. So this is an example in my, I'm showing my yellow, my yellows here are the numbers that are activated. All right, this is the southern half. So these emanations coming out are activating those and in every other one sequence, it's entraining matter in this way, entraining motion. What's the cutting edge on the top and there's the trailing edge on the other side totally reverses. The cutting edge on the top becomes the trailing edge on the bottom. Um, so in every way, just like our three and six, the three representing the coming in, the top northern male half, the six representing the female birth giving southern half, they're always mirror images. It's a very important principle in this math. So when we take these numbers and then we start to model a torus, the question is, what are we really looking at? Up until now, um, the model for the torus and how to design a coil has been based on this model. Whoops. And what we're going to have to do is take groups of nine and link them together so that they form unbroken circles. So that I have a one and eight as a circle, both positive and negative. Um, just like here, I have my positive numbers going up here. And then going in the opposite direction, my black ones are negative, but the same multiplication series, one and eight. And then four and five, it's the same. I've got my positive ones. These are negative. So every other one is positive and negative, which is causing, allowing that uh, binary motion to go on along the doubling circuits. And also, there's never any more of any number than any other number. They're always in exact proportion. All right? And so the smallest I can have to make a toroid is a nine by nine, and I'm gonna show how that works. That was never understood until I did the work on it to actually show how to map a true torus. When you're making these toruses, the standard way that people have been winding the coil is based on the family number groups along just a, a flat, series of 1 to 36. So this is only accounting really for a single horizontal axis. So in this one is going 1 to 16 which is 7 you know and I'm going back up here to 31 which is 4 so I've gone 1, 7, 4. On my third one I'm at a right angle to the first one and that's 10 again back to 1. 25 which is 7. 4, which is 4. 19, which is 1. Again, at a right angle to that last one. Everything's always at a right angle, so it's moving in a star shape. Notice you have parallel lines. Anywhere you go, you can make any of these parallel lines. So there are these parallel fields going on. And this winding in a star shape is referred to as spires. There are the family number groups crossing over each other in a triangulated sequence. This as a coil is built from two wires. One is the green wire, which is wrapping back around until it connects to itself. So if you want to see the pads, it's going one, two, three, one, two, three, two, three, one, two, and then back to where it started. Okay, the orange is your two, five, and eights. And those are moving in a mirror image direction. And then you have a space for your three nines and six, which is your yellow there. That space allows this etheron flux magnetic field to occur, which is supposed to pull the electricity and train it and synchronize it so that it moves at its fastest acceleration possible, making what's called an electrical venturi, an electrical vortex. Um, over the surface of this, are supposed to be these smaller one, two, four, eight, seven, fives. One, here's a pot, here's a negative vortex going in because my nine is positive. So when my nine's coming out, 
the three and six are going in and they're entraining this vortex in, where my negative nine is, I have a positive vortex coming out. And they're actually shearing against each other, which brings me to another important point. So I have two different vortices over the surface. If you want an analogy, that's what these are. They're like dimples on a golf ball. They're like sunspots. Okay? We call them underpinned nested vortices. You can call them Coriolis forces. Um, they entrain everything. And they have a sequence order and a flow to how they work. And I discovered actually how that works. So, when a 9 is coming out, we have a vor negative vortice going in, so the polarity of the vortice is opposite the polarity of your actual center number. If the number is positive, the vortice is negative. If the number is negative, the vortice is positive flowing out. And these, are, these vortices increase the acceleration of the flow of electricity by pulling it and entraining it. The idea being that pull stronger than push. Implosion always must precede explosion, even when you're igniting gasoline and, and such things. So, um, the other important point that I wanted to make is, we, if we go back to our symbol now, we look for all our principles. We've got, we've got multiplication series as circles, even though this is on a flat piece of paper, really there would be circles, a vertical axis, a horizontal axis. Okay, then a z-axis going straight. So we have multiplication tables of circles. We have multiplication series of straight lines. We have doubling, unbroken doubling circuits. Of course, we haven't proved they're unbroken yet, but we're going to show that. We have doubling circuits going this way. So we're counting. You could say if you look at the one overarching direction, you're accounting for both doubling and halving as the principle. Now ideally these tiles would be getting bigger and smaller because they actually expand and contract, but that depends on what, uh, what your numerical system is that you're using, so that's a little more advanced. So when we're working with the numbers like this, we've accounted for the multiplication series, we have doubling, we have our etheron flux magnetic field, we have family number groups, we have all the activation series. What about reciprocals? Remember I said my control is 1. Let's look on the other side. Now we've been looking at these groups, which is everything centered on the 9, and these are the main groups. Everything is always spinning around 9. It's always your axis. What I also have, though, is this relationship here. The 1 and the 1, the 2 and the 5, 7, 4, 8 and 8, which are our reciprocals that we learned on our symbol. 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 5 is 10 is 1, 7 times 4 is 28, which is 1, 8 times 8 is 64, which is 1, on and on. You can do that on this side, you can do that on this side. That is precisely what is contributing to everything being in these groups centered around your 3, 9, and 6, specifically the 9, because they're creating a shear. Let's call it a shear. If you want an explanation of a shear, you spin a cylinder around, and grab onto it, it's the common explanation, and you'll feel the shear as it's shearing your hand off. If, on the other hand, you're moving at the same speed as that cylinder, you won't feel anything. Okay? Um, a shear is any spinning system, any revolving system, is going to have a boundary condition, a bounded infinity to it. It's going to be centered on an axis, just like our bodies. Okay? So it has mirror symmetry. Now, um, this shear means that you can touch two different wires together, two wires, and they won't short out because their harmonics or resonance is so per perfect. Notice that it's always positive, negative, negative, positive, positive, negative, negative, positive. So they're always creating a perfect, resonant, harmonic shear by the extreme acceleration and motion in one direction while the other one's going in the other direction. They create a world boundary condition. This is highly significant for engineering. So now I've also accounted for my reciprocals. Okay, if I was using a different control for my toroid, I would still have all of these principles. But that is, again, a little more advanced. So.